everyone, and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. And I use the term Realism Overhaul somewhat loosely in this case, uh, because of course we are commemorating the launch of Captain Kirk into space in real life by revamping my version of the Enterprise. So, yes, uh, we have to zoom out quite a lot. We have hangar extender. And the full-size Enterprise is here. I have uh, done a video on it before, but I've updated it. And now I believe the warp engines are functional. I have also added impulse engines and obviously a very, very big reactor. Uh, the reactor is in the body. It uh, currently generates many megawatts. <laughs> uh, 11 million, I think. Uh, 11 million megawatts. Uh, so 11 terawatts and the warp nacelles each have warp engines uh, warp strength 90,000 tons because the mass of the Enterprise is 180,000 tons and Yeah, the the impulse engines are formidable as well uh, so whoop. And we've got how many zeros is that uh, okay 300 and uh, 3,200 mm, 3, meganewtons. It's basically 320,000 tons of thrust uh, at 7,000 seconds of specific impulse. I got that by putting a reactor with the uh, thermal rocket nozzle that KSB Interstellar has. Obviously, this is largely thanks to KSB Interstellar here. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, the warp engines in particular. Uh, but where is that thermal? There it is. So I put uh, an antimatter reactor with this thermal rocket nozzle. I got the specific impulse for liquid hydrogen. Not necessarily the best thing, but the problem is if we have less efficient fuel, and liquid hydrogen was the most efficient, even though it's not very dense, um, less efficient fuel means that we get heavier. If we get heavier, we go over the sort of mass indicated mass for the Enterprise. So uh, I wanted to use some, of course I could just arbitrarily increase the specific impulse to something ridiculous, but I decided not to do that. I went with what the thermal rocket nozzle could give us. Uh, I know there are other engines that could possibly give us better. We'll have to see about that. But for now, uh, this is what we've got. The dry mass of the whole thing is 101,000 tons and the wet mass 172,000 tons so we're carrying about uh, 71,000 tons of liquid hydrogen in there which would probably fill the whole thing oh no not quite there is some room left over but anyway uh and we are going to launch it from the surface of the earth using the impulse engines get to space and travel with the warp engines is my plan uh, yep, it's not a perfect looking texture right now. I mean, the windows are sort of just plastered on there, I know. Uh, but it's okay. It's better than it was last time. So let's bring it outside and see what we can do. So you can see our Delta V, uh, 36,000. We really need that in order to capture around different celestial bodies. Otherwise, you know, we can use the warp engines, but we're not going to be able to stop very easily. So the impulse engines are necessary for launch. <laughs> you can see the scale of this thing in its full size. Of course, the later enterprises are even larger. This is, I like this, especially because the warp nacelles are pretty high up. That actually makes it easier for the impulse engines to go through the center of mass. Actually pretty much essential because the warp nacelles, as long as you make them heavy enough, can counterbalance the body. As with the Enterprise D, because the warp nacelles are fairly low down, the impulse engines, uh, if they're only on the saucer section, don't really counterbalance it well unless you put some uh, impulse engines on the body of it down here. So anyway, throttle up. Uh, well, actually, you know what? Let's go somewhere. Set us target. No, we we need the we need Mars directly overhead. Is the thing. See, it's over there. I think it's possible to have the moon directly overhead, but not Mars right now, unless you're at the right time for Mars. Oh, it's it's over there though. I guess we can just turn to it eventually. It'll be fine. Okay. All right. 
Uh, well, that's south, though. <laughs> Uh, fine. I mean, you know, we should be able to do that, right? Okay, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. I have to come up with some way to do the impulse engines. I'm sure there's not proper impulse enginery. Okay, and launch. Giga Newtons, folks. Oh, I really want orbital right now. So yeah, I very carefully got the center of thrust and center of mass together, but again, the body makes it easier in this case. So we want to go heading 180, roll 180. Oh, I forgot to fix the landscape here, I keep Canaveral in this one. I guess it'd be better if we don't go upside down. I'm not too sure about the aerodynamics here, but we'll try. Very precarious rolling around all over the place here. The popping sound is because of whatever loop was used by real plumes for this particular plume. So we're really pushing the edge of the roll and yaw control there. Okay. Well, now the configuration of the warp nacelles makes sense. It's just to get out of the way of the plume of the impulse engine. <laughs> well, the moon's probably pretty dark. You can't really see it there. But in theory, we're pointing pretty close to at it. Now, lunar orbit is 1,600 meters per second. So, does that mean if I go that fast? and then activate the warp engine, we'd have to be out of the atmosphere. That we won't have to do anything special to capture. It's a theory. I remember doing this a long time ago, but I've forgotten all the details. It's been a long time since I've used a warp drive. There is a reaction wheel in here, but it's not all powerful in this case, given the size of it. Let's sort of maintain here for a bit. So I'll go with the... Oh, I guess maybe I shouldn't go with the left nacelle. One nacelle is the one to use for the warp engine. They both have the warp stuff in it. But one always becomes dominant. And in this case, it's the right nacelle. So we have to look at the max allowed throttle. That's altitude dependent. So we'll have to reduce warp speed. And hopefully we'll have the reactor capacity for it. So uh, KSB interstellar reactor and warp engines could fit in this. It's looking a little bit greater than I'd like. Uh, but there wouldn't be enough radiator capacity, even if you covered the whole surface of radiators, uh, with any of the ASB interstellar radiators that are available. So, yeah, that's somewhat more of a problem. You might have expected that. So I've overdone the radiator capacity on the body. Okay, we can do 0 0.005 to start off with. I think that might be good. Let's see. Let's point at the target. RCS. Uh, RCS. Does RCS work? That'll be really. Yeah, it's using the liquid hydrogen to do RCS. Without the RCS, the reaction wheel is not particularly good. Let's start charging. Charging is working. Anti-gravity acceleration. I'm not entirely sure how that works, but okay. I know our velocity vector is always all the way down here, so I don't know if it's going to be in the right place for capture. But that's why we have the impulse engines. Okay, it is ready, it says. I guess we should activate warp drive. Oop, 
There we go. Uh, no, no, RCS, you don't need to do anything. Well, we're at a fraction of the speed of light here. Let's increase our warp speed. Uh, maybe not too much since we're only going to the moon. Let's look at our trajectory. Um, right, we're going to hit it directly. I mean, that's not a surprise since... We aim directly at it. <laughs> I guess we'll fix that when we get there. Point zero one six C only. It's really fast to oh oh oh. Let's deactivate warp drive here. We're only going four hundred twenty-two point five meters per second. That is less than I was expecting. Oh, but we are in orbit. So it sort of worked out for us. Okay, we're in a loose orbit though. And we're going that way for some reason. Wait a sec. Okay, yeah, that would be in Lunar SOI. So, it was actually a successful little gambit. Not too sure this was the trajectory I wanted, but... Okay, so going from here, can we go to Mars? Let's see, Mars is currently underneath the surface, and that would be dangerous. <laughs> if we tried to activate the warp engine and go to Mars right now, we'd head right into the surface of the moon. So what we want to do is wait for a point where it is not in the surface. That'll be fine. I think that'll be enough clearance. Okay, go ahead and point at that. Target. Let's start charging. There it is. So hard to spot sometimes, the moon. Okay, well, around Mars we will want to be a little bit faster. Mars orbit is around 3,600 meters per second. I don't know if this is how this is going to work out, because this is moon relative velocity? I don't know where the velocity vector actually is going to end up, but we'll try our best. Maybe we should try to get that velocity vector to point closer to at Mars. I feel like the fact that we got into an inclined orbit around the moon was because our velocity vector was off. Interesting that we're like glowing red. That's because the whole thing is a radiator. <laughs> uh, uh, somebody had mentioned the uh, wrong coloration for the end of the warp nacelle. I didn't fix that yet, but I have I have it in my mind. So max allowed throttle is higher, so we can start off at 0 0.05 and work from there. Okay, that's that's all the additional amount that I'm going to give it. I wonder why the bridge isn't glow. I guess it doesn't have a radiator. Maybe I should turn off the glow for ra the radiator glow. Yeah, the bridge doesn't have the radiator module. Neither does the impulse engine. Okay, well, let's say we increase warp, uh, so activate warp drive. All right. And we go to warp one. One time the speed of, we're past one time the speed of light. Bump into anything. Five. Eight times the speed of light. I think that should be fast enough, right? I mean, let's see. Yeah, look at that. We've got Mars. We're cutting right across Venus's orbit. Uh, I wonder if we could get a better Mars periapsis by increasing warp. 301. 301 kilometers sounds good to me. In one minute. <laughs> Unfortunately, the warp effect is based on the root point, the 000, zero point of the model. And the 00, zero point of the model, for my own uh, convenience, I made the point where it attaches to this nacelle, uh, to the pylon or strut or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so... I'll have to fix that so that the warp effect comes out. Though we could just skip the warp effect. I could just turn that off, but 
it is sort of nice and we could we just need it to be shifted shifted over oh wait our periapsis is now suborbital that was false advertising oh gosh we better decrease warp speed the sound also changes deactivate warp drive <laughs> we were getting a little bit perilously close there okay well uh did i plan it right yes i did we are in orbit okay so yes uh, our orbital velocity was such that we were able to get a nice little orbit around here could have got a little bit closer but i panicked anyway uh still an inclination though because our vector was not pointed directly at our velocity vector wasn't pointed directly at Mars, I suppose. So we are in orbit around Mars. Not normally how you see, because the Enterprise is always pointed towards its prograde vector, unlike actual space objects, which sort of point however they feel like. But, yep, we have done a thing. Oh, it's cooled off now. And self-destruct no probably don't want to do that though the enterprise had an option <laughs> anyway there we go and i've left the bay open shoot i left the bay open this whole time all right so that's our foray with the enterprise's warp drive this revamped enterprise and i'll probably figure out something to do with it eventually <laughs> but for now thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time